life can be devastating, especially when what you thought would never happen happens to you. Back in jail, I was kept at the female sector of the jail. Sitting at the door where I waited for the jailer to come and take me in, I was sitting close to a woman. She asked me what my offense was. I told her that I was caught carrying a liquid substance which I did not know was a drug. She shook her head in pity and said, My daughter, it will not be a funny experience. Immediately, I got gripped by fear. I mean fear of the unknown. I began to imagine what my experience will look like. I've never been to prison before, never in my life. Initially, I was scared of meeting those real and fierce-looking drug bandits. I finally landed in the jail. That day, it was as if a new prey for consumption had just landed. I got scared the more because I have never slept in a jail before. The questions were too numerous for me to answer. What's your name? What's your offense? How long will you be here? Well, I was able to answer the few I could, then I went to bed. Throughout the night, tears dripped down my cheeks, wondering what my parents would be thinking about me. I searched for sleep, but I could not get any. I was completely shattered. Even if I was to be jailed, certainly not in another country where I knew nobody. I was still dumbfounded, staring at the ceiling and wishing that the morning breaks as fast as possible. The next day, my mom came to see me in the jail. I hugged her as we lavished rivers of tears on each other's shoulders. Deep within, Mom, she knows I am innocent. It was Dad that scolded me, asking what business I had to do in Brazil from school. I had no option than to explain everything that happened to them. Dad gave me assurance of getting me out of here this month. It was not such an easy one because I have no witness but myself. I could not even reach my taxi driver again. Then a few months down the line, I was still in a really bad way. Then I went up to court. I got two and a half years. I was only 18. I was shocked and scared of being away from my family and friends for so long. I have never been in jail before, so I didn't know what to expect. I just wasn't myself. I couldn't sleep. I was keeping myself to myself, just staying in my cell. I've never made a friend or talked to anybody. I hated the taxi driver the more. He played with my life and sense. I began to have negative thoughts about him. Obviously, there is nothing good about my taxi driver. He has just been taking me from one problem to the other. This should be the third time now that he is landing me into a problem. First, it was the letter under his cushion. Second was his arrest, which was done by my parents. And now he brought me to Brazil, only for me to end up in jail. What kind of man is this? I scream in agony. One of my jailmates jumped out of bed when she heard my scream, thinking that something is wrong. But when she entered my room, she noticed I was fine, apart from the sweat that was all over my body. She came close to me and drew me close to herself, cuddling me back to bed. She is such a nice person. With the stories I heard about the jail, I didn't believe a good person can be met in jail. She asked me what was the problem. I was still speechless. After waiting for some minutes, I finally spoke to someone in the jail. I felt loved once more. I hid nothing from Cynthia. I told her everything that happened. How I met the taxi driver and how I fell in love with him and the challenges I have experienced from being close to him all this while. But then I noticed something. Cynthia kept smiling at me while I was telling her the story. I was surprised. What is it that my story was not touchy enough? I was disturbed about her response that I asked her if she has had such an experience before now. She said, not really. Just that 
she was imagining how good the taxi driver was to me. I was really surprised because this was a taxi driver that brought me here. All she said after hearing my story was, will you get something good without getting bad? It's not possible that all these just happened like that. This statement got me thinking throughout the morning, but I decided not to get confused and came to the conclusion that taxi driver just used and dumped me. Months went by, and I didn't hear from my parents talk of more of the taxi driver. This was another wander for me. How can my parents abandon their only child in a jail in another country? It was that bad that even when I tried calling with the jail cell phone, they would not pick my calls. I sent them messages still yet. I got no response from them. Are you sure these are my parents? Because I don't see the reason why a mother and father should abandon their own child, even if she committed murder. I felt like killing myself. I think that should be the best solution since nobody cares. Not even the court called up my case again. Well, for the court, I don't blame them because I had no lawyer. Because the last time I checked, my parents promised to come with my lawyer, who will take me out of jail. My dad had the best lawyer in my country. From the cases I have learned he has won so far, they are nothing to compare to it. All he would need is just a truthful statement of the story from me. Give him the next 24 hours and I'm out of here. But I never saw a glimpse of neither my dad nor his lawyer. On one Saturday morning about 2 a.m., I was sleeping and the memories of me and my parents kept flashing down my memory. How loving the taxi driver was to me and how he promised to set up my cat boutique was the second thing that came to my mind. And then the last thought I had was that of my cat, Karina. I was debased. I thought of how lonely she would be by now. Has she run away from the house when she saw no sign of my return? Oh my God, how has she been feeding? Who has been cuddling her during the snow because of the cold would be hectic by this time? I woke up from these memories weeping profusely and I felt like killing myself and forgetting everything. I thought of getting a knife or gun from the jailers, but they were all in custody of their weapons. Then a thought came into me. If I can stay under the snow and get trapped there, it will be nice. After all, nobody will know because the snow would have heaped on my body and everybody will think it is a normal snowberg. What happened to me that early morning was what I could not fathom. All I could remember was that I stood up and took a walk outside into the snow. I stood outside the snow trying to forget my past. The doctor said I came back to consciousness after three days, and it was alleged that I wanted to commit a suicide in a snowberg. When I was unconscious, I could not remember any other thing. All I saw was myself walk through a dark lane with my cat. She was so happy to see me. She jumped on every part of my body, but I noticed she lost one of her eyes. When I saw this, I was angry, and I wondered of what would have led her to this state. Could it be that she was trying to break through the window when she did not see a sign of my return and got cut? But thank God that I woke up. When I woke up, everything changed. It was as if I was in a new world. On opening my eyes, I saw a lot of changes. I was surrounded with flowers everywhere on the hospital bed. The walls, even the floor, were well decorated with rose flowers. Oh, they are my best flowers. Another spectacular thing I saw was signs written on the doorpost telling me to get well soon. Another read, we love you. Please come home. We miss you. The hospital room was calm with no sign of any human being. I couldn't understand what was going on. I stretched my hands and legs, but I didn't feel any pain. I felt a bit relieved that nothing serious happened to me. 
I took one of the flyers and perceived the healing aura that came from the petals. I remained in the room without making a move, but kept wondering on who this could be. I thought aloud, I know this is from my cellmates. They love me to the extent of saving me from the iceberg. When I remembered the care and love they shower on me, whenever I feel pale and lonely, they make sure I feel good by singing to me. Suddenly, the doors opened. Guess who I saw? It was Karina, my cat. She ran onto my bed and hugged. This is unbelievable. I expected to see the jailers around me to get me secured so that I don't run away. But the opposite was the case. I saw my cellmates walking and started singing. Happy birthday to me. How could I have forgotten that it was my birthday? I just turned 19, and I never knew. Then the big shocker came when I saw the jailers also walk up in the same mood. It was a dancing party amidst a lot of drinking. Indeed, my mood was lightened, and I got more excited. I stepped down and joined them in the dance. The door opened again, and who I saw was unbelievable to me. It was the two policewomen that caught me with the black liquid substance at the airport. I got scared the more and began to withdraw my steps backward, looking for somewhere to hide. But they called me on to feel free and also celebrate my day. They joined in the dance. I tried feeling free, but I couldn't help it but to remain careful and conscious of my environment. I was still trying to understand what was happening when my parents walked in. I wanted to hug them in excitement, but then I had a mixed feeling. Why should I welcome them? After abandoning me for the months in the jail, but my mom rushed and hugged me. She pleaded for forgiveness as she promised to explain all that transpired to me. The next person I saw was beyond my imagination. The taxi driver walked in and knelt down in front of me with a ring in his hands. I was mute. Then mom and dad and everybody in the room screamed, please say yes. Then dad said that everything that happened was a deal to check my love for the taxi driver, who happened to be a multimillionaire in the fashion industry. I said yes, because I still love my taxi driver. We got married and loved each other forever.